Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving when we're recording this. So um, my name's Trigby, I'm the Director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. We are going to get started with our uh, busy webinar of the day in a few minutes. I just want to give everybody the opportunity to sort of catch up and get everything up and rolling. So bear with me for just a few a minute or two. I want to let everybody who is catching on uh, get uh, the opportunity to get started. So this is live. If you can hear my voice right now, I am going to be saving this to YouTube as well. So uh, typically what happens is I, I, I want to give everybody a minute or two to, to uh, log on before I get started. And then as soon as I start uh, another you know, eight or 10 people join. So give me just one minute to get everything uh, set up on my side and we'll get started in just one, minute, one second. So thanks everybody for joining us today. All right, I think I've got everything uh, worked out on my end. So thanks everybody again for joining. Uh, my name's Trigby. I'm the Director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about how to do just some, some very basic marketing automation. Uh, we're not gonna get any, into anything that's terribly fancy because this gets uh, fairly complicated fairly quick. So I want to give you guys the opportunity to just kind of learn about the, the processes behind these, this, and, and what the, the value that this can bring to your business, which there's a tremendous one. So um, we are uh, having, we have a whole bunch of people that are trying to log on right now. The, the numbers are fluctuating wildly. So I'm going to give it just another minute or so before I really get started. So thanks everybody for your patience as uh, we just wait for everybody with uh, issues to, to help figure them out. So get started in just a second. Perfect. All right, cool. Well, hopefully everybody can see everything the way in which I'd like it to be seen. This is, uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get, her, get, her, get her started. So I'm gonna be going through a number of things very, very quickly today. So as I said previously, my name is Trigvi. I'm the Director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. Uh, I am going to be doing, uh, like I said, moving through this relatively quickly. If you miss something, if you would really like to ask a question, take this opportunity right now to, to write down my contact information. I will be more than happy to uh, send the deck to you. I will be more than happy to if you reach out to me and talk to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any question that you might have. Also, if you feel like this is a, a worthwhile presentation, that's great. I'd love it, it just to hear your feedback. I know there's a gentleman in Colorado uh, named Jerry who hopefully, if you're listening, Jerry, hey, hope all's well. Jerry gave me some good feedback the last time I spoke to him about uh, my presentation style, so hopefully I can uh, take that feedback and put it to good use today. So uh, also, as I said, once I'm done, this will get automatically posted to our YouTube channel, uh, the BusyWeb YouTube channel. So if you want to come back and view this a second or third time, you absolutely can do that. So who is BusyWeb? If you're not familiar with us, we are a full-service digital marketing agency. We are based in uh, a northern suburb of Minneapolis. We are uh, able to do just about anything under the sun when it comes to uh, digital marketing. So we build websites, we grow your audience, we use so social tools, email tools, anything under the sun that our clients require in order to help them achieve their marketing goals. So I'm going to give you a special offer at the end of this, but I'm going to wait to the end to, to, talk, to make it worth your while to stick through and hopefully laugh politely at uh, all of my jokes today. So, oh, and as soon as I talked about bad jokes, I lost two viewers. So hopefully it won't be too bad. So what I want to do is start today with a basic concept of what uh, we should all know, which is a basic sales funnel. This is kind of what it looks like. You spend the most amount of your time finding your customers, finding prospects. You spend, uh, once you sort of figure out who the right fits are, 
you're going to spend uh, time synthesizing them down into converting them into customers. And then finally, uh, the time that you're spending keeping your existing customers, you're going to spend the least amount of time on that. That is a basic sales funnel. It's sales funnel 101. And uh, the trouble is with the rise of the internet in the last seven to eight years, it's now been completely found to be fallacious. This is really what it looks like now. When you use new marketing tools and different marketing tools like email and social media, you're already reaching out to people who you already know and that know you. So new ways of marketing is, is going to be focused on reaching out to the, those people that already know you. You're already reaching out to them on a regular basis with information and offers that are relevant to them because you've done business with them or they've they've found you. So now it turns out if you do it right, you're actually going to be again to start converting more and more people into keep continuing to keep them as customers. Think about it this way. When do you really do a lot of your substantive shopping? If you're anything like me, it's, you know, right now it's noon on a Wednesday when I'm recording this. I am not really focused a lot on making substantive buying decisions for my household right now or my personal life. It's because I'm at work. When I have the opportunity to really think about what I want to do and how I want to do business with uh, the people in the world around me, more than likely it's after nine o'clock, after my son's gone to bed, I'm exhausted, I probably opened up a beer, and I'm sitting in front of an old episode of Law & Order with my iPad in front of me and about 8 million things that I have to do before I need to go to bed in an hour. So those are the customers that you are going to have to start looking at and reaching. Their attention span is very, very small, and it's all about how quickly can they help you and you help them and as fast as possible. So we have to look as good as possible and consistent as possible across the board. So in order to do that, we want to be able to get physical responses from our marketing, and we also want to get measurable responses from our marketing. Because getting measurable responses from our marketing gets results that we can actually measure. And so that's why we're going to talk about automation tools as a way to complement your growth activities today. So basically, the, the thrust of an automation tool is it helps you get closer to earning new revenue or donations, anything that is uh, what you get. So you get calls, you get downloads, you get people coming to your door, anything like that. That's, that's what you want from your, uh, from your customers and what you, from your prospects. Well, what do they get from you in, in exchange for that? Well, they get... Uh, a reason to come in, they get a reason to do business with you, they feel like that if they start to do business with you, because you're giving information, you're giving support, you're giving tips, they feel like, yeah, I'm th this particular company is going to be invested in my well-being. And they're going to have this sense of validation that you can provide them immediately that will help them feel like uh, they, if they want to reach out, they want to reach out to you. So, <clears throat> we, talk, we talked a little bit about how, how in, in this day and age we're, we're really having to flip the funnel by marketing to the people who already know you. This type of customer nurturing is, is really beneficial because these are the types of customers or supporters who have already chosen to work with you in hopes of getting something of value in return. So if you don't send them the information they want or if they don't feel like the relationship is fruitful, then you run the risk of losing them as a customer. So think about this. 91% of people check their email daily. So if we're wanting to look at where the customers are at, more than likely we have a great opportunity to reach our audience, whatever our audience might be, and connect them with new subscribers that we want to convert to a paying customer we're going to find them via email. So in addition to that, 82% of people, if they have the opportunity, will sign up for uh, a, a, an email list on a brand website, either because they feel like they're going to get something from it or they're going to get uh, some sort of value from it. 72% of those people sign up because they're expecting to get some discounts. So. Um, if you can incentivize somebody to subscribe to your list, do so on your website, really everywhere you can be, you can because that's really where they're going to come. Go, the, the, excuse me, they are going to go 
first to learn about your organization. I have just had so much, uh, so many good things to say all at once. It all got caught in my mouth. So, how do email campaigns come into play here with your marketing strategy? Well, according to a recent study, uh, for every dollar spent on email marketing, you're going to get about forty-five dollars back. So that doesn't always hold true, but on the average, it's a tremendous return on investment. It gives you a great opportunity to establish a consistent plan to convert and keep subscribers coming back time and time again. Uh, and and email marketing is a great, easy way to do it. Now, there are a lot of more complicated automation efforts, and we can... We're probably going to get into that in later webinars, but right now today we're going to really talk about how email marketing automation can really help uh, supercharge your business. So the, finally, but one last thing, as we're talking about the value of email marketing, by and large, email marketing get, converts at a, at a, a rate that's three and a half times higher than a conversion rate on social media. So every new subscriber that you collect has a potential to become a paying customer or donor. And it also it gets done in a much faster, quicker way than through social media. So there's, in terms of speed and value, it's hard to beat. So I'm going to uh, use some very specific terms as I go through here. So I wanted to make sure that I listed them out and, and so that we're all on the same page. When I say autoresponder, I'm talking about a series of pre-designed automated emails designed with a specific goal in mind that gets triggered after one of your contacts or subscribers is added to a list through your online signup form. So when I say data-based triggers, date-based, excuse me, I'm re re referring to any pre-designed emails that are personalized to send to somebody on a specific date. So for instance, a renewal date or uh, on the day when they first become a member of your organization, anniversary, etc., on, on becoming a customer. So when I talk about a contact, uh, I'm talking about an email address, referring to the, uh, an existing email address that you already have. Think of uh, a contact as a person you already know. A subscriber, on the other hand, is a brand new person who decides to give you their email address in exchange for something in return. They don't know your organization yet, nor do you have an existing relationship with them. So think of them as the people you need to make a great relationship with ASAP. Finally, when I say campaigns, I'm referring specifically to the marketing messages you're going to design and send, and, and send out. So, okay, how am I going to break all this down today? We're going to go through this in four parts. Number one, I'm going to talk about what is an automation campaign. I'll talk about what an automation campaign is, how they can help you, and how they can help make the right first impression with subscribers and nurture them towards making a purchase or making a donation faster. Second, how do you know if it's a good use of your time to use one? I'll talk about how to determine if using an autoresponder is right for your organization, and then how to identify ways your organization can use an automation campaign to your advantage. Next, I'll, I'll go through how to use it the right way. I'll talk about how to segment contact lists so automation messages can work properly, how to set up your web lists, how to set up forms to funnel contacts in the correct lists. So we'll also talk about the type of content you want to use and guidelines for setting the timing of your automated campaigns. Finally, I'll show you some uh, next steps, how others are using automation tools, and how what you really need to do to, to get started. So <clears throat> What is an automation campaign? So basically what it, what it is is it, it, if you find yourself sending uh, messages manually all the time or you wish you had time to send out more regular and powerful emails, an automation campaign is a great way of sending a consistent and, and, and uh, clear message about the company that you work for or the nonprofit or whatever to every person who comes in without consuming any of your time or requiring you to wear any more hats than you already do. To put this a, 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 a maybe a simpler way, it is creating a very similar experience for your customers and your, uh, your subscribers. Anytime somebody set, puts up their hand and says, I'm interested in doing business with you, you're giving them the same experience that they get uh, from everybody. And so the value there is that the, 
everybody's going to get a very similar experience and it's consistent and it's good. So what, how exactly does it work? Well, while you're taking care of business, your autoresponders are going to be welcoming new subscribers into your community on your behalf. And you can rest assured that they're also going to be receiving really timely information that they can, that they need to begin or establish a relationship with your organization. So when somebody signs up for your mailing list, they're going to automatically get sent the messages and the materials you want a potential new su supporter or customer to get. So that could be a coupon code, a discount code, a video to watch, uh, a downloadable thing like, a, like an ebook, or a, a simply a thank you note or, 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 or a welcome message. So <clears throat> an autoresponder can be sent to, uh, to mail to subscribers after you've added them to a list or uh, after they've subscribed to your mailing list online from a sign-up paid sign-up form on your website or even something like text to join uh, for QR codes or even through a Facebook sign-up form that uh, is on uh, on your Facebook page. So think about anytime you get a welcome email after subscribing to a business's mailing list. Some of them will give you a coupon immediately, and some of them offer you a free thing like uh, coffee or gift for a few days after a week after subscribing. That's what that's really what what the autoresponder is. So it can either work by when somebody gets added to a list or by date. So it can also be triggered by uh, when it, it some uh, a specific date happens, like an anniversary. Or a birthday. So an anniversary date could be when a subscriber became a member, could become uh, when they donated, or when they are, uh, you know, when it's their birthday or something like that. So <clears throat> there are a couple of different kind of automations, and I kind of I listed them out here. So think of it. Uh, Think of it like an umbrella with a couple of different reasons why somebody would create an autoresponder and how they'd be activated. So first, there are messages that are a trigger to send once somebody joined your mail, joins your mailing list online or if you add them to a list. So first, uh, more than likely, the welcome email is the most common example of an email that's triggered by somebody joining your list. Second, another type of autoresponder that could be created could be done by creating a list, creating an autoresponder uh, series, like a re-engagement campaign, or uh, adding new contacts from one list to, to another. So the second type is a date-based trigger. So your system would check on a regular basis for a contact whose store data qualifies them to receive a birthday or an anniversary email. So a couple of weeks before somebody's birthday, uh, an email service provider like Constant Contact would automatically send the pre-list of preset email or series of emails out to people who, you know, you want to wish a happy birthday with a special offer or, or message or something like that, that, that. So that way you're sitting there every month trying to find out who all the people are with January birthdays. You don't really have to do that anymore. It just automatically goes out. So let's go deeper into how automation can work for you while you work. So what's the difference between date-based automation tools and list join automation tools, and what exactly do they have in common? Date-based automation makes communicating certain messages on specific dates automatic and timely. So good news for you is there's less maintenance. It saves you from having to seek out anyone with a birthday or a membership to, uh, for example, to send them something special. You get to design the email once, and an automation tool does the rest and gets their special message to them each time. So, for example, if you are a nonprofit that collects birthdays to send special messages to big donors, or if you have to remind people when their monthly membership fees are due, an automation tool can seek out the birthday or anniversary or the membership date or whatever on your behalf and spend a, send a special short and sweet message, which you get to design ahead of time to be delivered on that specific date to a specific person or group. So that's date-based automation. List join automation is a series of welcome emails, which you get to create and schedule to send when people are triggered when they subscribe to a new mailing list. 
So autoresponders are, are sometimes referred to as a drip campaign. So as uh, somebody new engages with you, they get uh, a drip every couple, three, four, five days. So the goal is it's meant to drive a specific action from the new subscriber while introducing them to your brand, the type of communications you send, what the value of doing business with you is. Uh, welcome emails are a good example of a, a, a of list join autoresponders. So what they have in common is they're created in advance. They're intended to always be valid or evergreen so the content doesn't ever become outdated. They should also be designed with only one major call to action. So you're only asking your people to do one specific thing that you want the recipient to do after they receive the message. So let's see how this works in action. So I'm looking for a gift for somebody, something, <clears throat> wow. Sorry, Jerry, if you're still with me, I'm trying. So I'm looking for a gift for somebody special. So I'm gonna do an online search for boutiques and then they come ac I, I come across this business. So uh, I uh, have found it on social media and I looked at the website uh, and I see that one of my friends is following them on Facebook. So I'm kind of interested in, in what they offer on the website, but I kind of want some more information or, or a discount for a new customer special. So uh, I get a 15% uh, off coupon for joining the mailing list, and then I so then I just, just decide to subscribe. So then what happens is the business itself has uh, set up a welcome email autoresponder that automatically mails me the coupon. And now, all of a sudden, I get this right after subscribing about, and I know what else is out there and what else is part of the business, So, and they've already thanked me for signing up for the mailing list, so I've got a great first impression, uh, and now I even have a coupon. So now I know exactly where I want to go. So the next thing I do is I go uh, in to redeem my coupon. Everybody likes couponing. Doesn't have to be a giant coupon, it's just a little something. So that's how kind of how the cycle works. And so after I, I take the action, I'm already in the store. So this, this doesn't always have to work if you don't have a brick and mortar store. If you sell online in the end, the cycle is still the same because your new subscriber is making a purchase from you or taking that next step with your business. Even if you're not a retail-based business, again, if on a B2B environment, what you're trying to look for is somebody to throw up your, their hand and start into your sales process. And so while you might not be offering a coupon, you might be offering something similar like an ebook or something that will help them understand who you are and what they want to do to do business with you. So we've talked about how, what, it, what exactly is an automation campaign. Now let's talk about how do you know if you really should use one. So like any good online, uh, online thing that you're going to go through today, I've created a quiz. So here's the quiz. If you answer some of these questions right, a yes, then an automatic responder may be right for you. Number one, do you send the same introductory information over and over and over again? So if your customers need special information like a form or something learning or certain informational content, uh, you can send that to them every single time to a new subscriber. So do you neglect to send introductory information to new subscribers? So once somebody subscribes to you, do they get any sort of thank you note or do they get any sort of validation for giving you a piece of information? If not, then you know maybe this is the right thing for you. So do you believe that each subscriber should receive uh, the same friendly welcome? Well, yes, hopefully you should if you want to stay in business. That's why every time you go into a McDonald's, the, the experience is by and large the same. Do you want to create a lasting first impression immediately? Nothing says you care more than a generous first-time offer. So if you've got something to give new subscribers, it makes a really good first impression because it shows that you're generous right off the bat and that you're engaged with them right off the bat. This will make people think about you. This will make people open your email over and over again. So you have a specialized sub-audience with a varied, varied interest. 
Do you have want to celebrate customers' birthdays? Do you have uh, a subscription or a reason to send an annual reminder? If you've answered yes to any of those, then chances are good this is absolutely the right thing for you to do because it's going to make your life a little bit easier and it's going to make the customer experience a lot more consistent. So according to studies, 60% of businesses that uh, use an automation campaign get higher open rates when new subscribers got a welcome email. And similarly, 89% of consumers will turn to search engines to, uh, to research a product or service before purchasing. So what that means is your future customers are most likely to encounter your brand first from an online search. So once they want more information about your products or services, they're going to and because we learned previously, they're going to sign up for your mailing list. We're expecting to receive that additional information. The least you can do is to say thank you with a welcome email. They're going to expect it. It's easy enough for you to deliver. And then the next thing you do is get them to start engaging with you. OK, we've talked about what exactly is an automation campaign. We've talked about how do you know if you should use one. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts of how to use it the right way. So we're going to talk about how to identify the objective of an automation series, how to use evergreen content so that your message never really expires and it never needs updating. We'll talk about some timing best practices. And then finally, we'll talk about how to segment your contacts so you can use automated messages in the right way. So first thing we want to do is we want to identify the goal and strategize about what exactly we want our, our goal to do. So <clears throat> in the most basic sense, we want our customers to go from point A to point B. So how they get there, it tends to be a little circumspect. So um, they, we, want, we want them to go from a subscriber to a prospect. We want them to do some research about our business, interact more with us, and then become, become a customer. So there's not a lot of extra fluff in there. So the call to actions are clear. Where we want them to go are absolutely clear. We want them to donate. Uh, we want to give them a clear call to action that shows them how, the, how they can do that. We need them to come to our store or start engaging with us. We, we do that in the most clear way possible. So make it a, a, as obvious as possible. So in order for an automation campaign to work, you have to have really, really organized lists. So period, really just period. So the, any email service provider can create multiple autoresponder series for multi, multiple different lists. So if you have two different customer audiences, you can absolutely have different drip campaigns for different lists. But it's, very, it's absolutely critical to keep your data clear. So one of the best ways that you can start segmenting your data and you're organizing your list of contacts right off the bat is ask them to categorize their relationship to you. What are they interested in? What of your services do they really want to know more about? So once you do that, then you can automatically segment those into a category that fits a bucket, really. So if you know if you've got two different services and the client and the prospect is only interested in the second one, getting that first service information really isn't going to be helpful for them. It's going to be counterproductive and more than likely they're going to go away. So we want to make sure that we use language that people using our business for the first time can relate to. So there's no real limit on how we can break up our lists, but we want to make sure that they are absolutely in the door right away. So the list I have on, uh, on screen here is, uh, is a B2C business, and uh, it's, they created a bunch of different lists on there. But again, the, the key thing there is that big call to action that after they've put together their, their su subject lists, they've, they've, they've done the one thing that I want them to do, which is to sign up. So once that happens, then I get to have a lot of fun. I can start breaking people up into those massive different kinds of lists. What are the things that they're more, most interested in, in? So when I encounter new people along the way and I need to add, manually add them 
to my account. I'm going to know exactly which category they belong in, and I can add them to the, the list myself. <coughs> Excuse me. So the great value in doing this is it makes creating your email each month absolutely that much easier because you know exactly who you're talking to and what they want to read about because you've already asked them that information ahead of time. So let's talk about what to put in your autoresponder emails. So first thing we want to do is talk about figure out what we can offer them. Uh, the best way to access really what you have to offer as well as the capacity you have to run a promotion or an offer or something like that is uh, really a, an abundance of goodies that you can use to incentivize somebody to join. So all of us have uh, supercomputers in our pocket. You can record something on a smartphone, tell your story in installments, tell, uh, give them a special recipe for either literally or figuratively, uh, highlight the kind of company culture that you work with, uh, we are currently running a, a, a drip campaign on our Facebook page right now where all of the kids of the, the employees at BusyWeb came in and pretended to be their parents. So it's hilarious. It's very, very cute. Kind of gives you an idea of the culture of the people at BusyWeb that we work with. Sharing photos, who you are and what you do. Again, people buy from who they like. So the more that you can demonstrate the, that you're, in fact, likable, the more people are going to be interested in working with you. Next, you want to think about thought leadership. Uh, ultimately, no matter how much you might like somebody, they, you want them to help you make or save money. So having, uh, if we flip that, as we're talking to our prospects, we want to show how we can help other people do that. We do that by providing offerings uh, to ebooks, podcasts, blog posts, whatever, anything that kind of says um, uh, how, how we've done this in the past and how you can make your life easier. That includes uh, how to's, cheat sheets, stuff like that, or even a consultative gift or something like this. So the options are really just endless. I put together as many as I could, but uh, ultimately, all of these are sort of feasible to do and all feasible to manage and honor because it's something that's basically going to run behind the scenes for an indefinite amount of time. It should not ever lead to a dead link. It should never lead to anything uh, that doesn't go anywhere. So the, the, the word of the day here is evergreen. So what we want is we want to think of something that's always going to have uh, relevance no matter the season, uh, no matter the time of year. So what do we want to not do? Well, we want to, we want to make sure that we don't include anything that is uh, uh, that has an expiration date. So if it's seasonal, don't do that. Don't include anything you're not carrying anymore. Don't include too many things like that you would want somebody to focus on. Make it very clear and very specific. You want the recipient to respond to your message, so you want to have a very goal-driven call to action. Again, we are looking to measure how many people follow through on the call to action. That's how we define the success of our marketing. And you want to keep it short and sweet and informative and useful. It's a lot, but make sure short and sweet is the, is the most important thing. So uh, a great example of a massive failure of this happened last year. Uh, Adidas had put together an email campaign for everyone who had finished the Boston Marathon, and the title of the email was, Congratulations, You Survived the Boston Marathon, which on the one hand is kind of true. Yay, you survived because that's a, that's a feat and that is worthy of praise. However, uh, it was not ever being content because of what happened in Boston. Obviously, that somebody needed to fix that. Remember, uh, though, that the first impression of somebody that gets that piece of content is going to be really the first interaction that they're going to have with your business after they've decided to put up their hand. So you want to make that interaction rewarding and make it uplifting, easy, and very simple and very quick. So, okay, now once you've mapped out a short series of emails and you've designed them, you want to consider the timing. So delivering that message in a very timely way is very, very crucial in a series of, of reminder emails or nudges. So think about how often do you send regular emails. Do you send them weekly? Do you send them monthly? What 
what works for you. You want to fit your autoresponder into that model. So if it's weekly or monthly, you want to be touching people again on the prospect list in that same same uh, same genre. So even if you send bi-weekly or even uh, too infrequently, uh, you want to make sure that your autoresponder is consistent to the way that you normally do business so they're not surprised or caught off guard once they decide that they want to work with you and, and work with you uh, in, in, on, on further levels. So let's look at a couple of examples of how this really works and has worked in the re real world. So here are a couple of examples uh, of a really stellar welcome email. So you can see uh, there's a couple of different uh, versions of the same thing here. Uh, on the left, you can see that there's, uh, you know, exactly who you're dealing with. You can see a picture of the person who signed it, which shows you, hey, they're they're willing to, to put themselves out there uh, right away. Uh, none of these are particularly bad. The, 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 the nice one, the one on the right, the canine assistant, says, canine assistance is that it's mercifully short. It's only two paragraphs. I can. I have never met anybody in my life who woke up in the morning and said, "Boy, I'd really like to read a five-paragraph email." So, keeping it short and sweet, you can rest assured that anyone who signed up for your list is is getting what they need immediately to kick off that first encounter with your organization. So, here's kind of the legend of what we do uh, at at BusyWeb for our clients is we actually write actually sit down and write out a calendar of how we do, do do this. So here's a sample calendar that we created. You can see on the right here, uh, if a new subscriber comes in, if they come in via social media, here's where the content goes out, here's where the new things that, that we're gonna be putting out, here's the, the promotions, uh, and and uh, just the regular newsletter. So in any, any given month, uh, hypothetically, if this was us, we would be looking at a good 10 points of contact with our customer base and our different audiences. But notice that only two of those are uh, a, camp, a campaign for a discount. So we don't always have to give away the farm. We don't always have to, to, to make people feel like we are uh, <clears throat> trying to get their business in a desperate way. So we can do that just by simply saying, here are the things that we can do. So here's how this look, looks in, uh, in, in real time uh, for, again, that hypothetical uh, Liber Liberty Jane clothing company. So uh, the first thing we do is in the welcome email, we, they get uh, a free, um, free uh, pattern to sew right after they subscribe. Then after that welcome email, they get an email about how to connect with them on social media. Um, ideally, this, you should even have social media icon buttons there. Uh, then the third email that they get is to, describes other branches of the company so that you know what else gets done. Uh, the fourth is about their rewards program. Fifth is a final uh, buy two, get one free pattern. And then uh, the last is a check-in to say, hey, I uh, just want to thank you for uh, signing up with us if, if this isn't working out check out our free tutorial videos. So you can see that this is evergreen, meaning that it doesn't matter the customer time of year or what they're interested in. Through that entire sequence, we're gonna hit all the high points of what they're looking for. So it, it could be uh, a million people down the road, it's still gonna be the same basic concept of what we're providing. So that autoresponder series, uh, this is an example from uh, a, a, of what that might lo might look like. So he does some. Uh, th this is from a friend of mine named Mike, and this it, it, this does something a little different when somebody signs up. So what he does is he spreads his digital assets out a bit. So when somebody initially subscribes, he tells them what he will be sending them and what they can expect to learn from the digital videos he's sending. So immediately he's setting the table for what exactly you can expect from working with him. Then he sends out two videos per email that people can watch on their own time. So it's not something that's like Facebook Live or anything like that. It's something that is just there so you can watch when, when you can. So he spreads them out because he wants to give people the time 
to learn about the different consulting offers that that he offers and decide whether or not they want to hire him. So for Mike, this works really well because it stretches his digital assets over the course of a couple of weeks. So people aren't inundated with emails from him, and after a month, they become pretty familiar with him and decide whether or not they want to do business with him. And here's what his uh, here's what his sign up looks like. So uh, this is this is uh, uh, this is Mike's first email. Uh, he gets uh, excuse. Me. Shoot, I need to catch up with my thought here. So, okay, so this is his first email. He starts with a welcome email. Next, he sends some content. Here's a couple of videos. And then the next video part is sent a couple of days apart. So the approach is slow and steady, but it's a great speed for B2B. So it's not very salesy. It allows the subscriber to educate themselves on its own. So because Mike has set this up so that every time somebody subscribes, they get the same closing experience and the same educational experience every single time. So I wanted to give you one last uh, thought of how this might this might work for you. This is a nonprofit called the Leafline Project. So they don't have a lot of email of digital content to offer as compared to Mike, but what they do have is some of their best resources in their welcome series. So they're soliciting donations, they're looking for volunteers, uh, they want to stretch that out over a couple of weeks so the subscribers have time to look around the website, explore the assets, figure out if they really want to engage. So this is how the, uh, the autoresponder got set up for them. So how did that get set up in real time? Well, first thing was the, uh, the welcome email that says, here's where we are. It's a cute little fun video that goes along with it. The second email is another little video, but it provides a little background on what the mission of the organization is. It also includes another digital asset that drives subscribers back to the website for further interaction. Next, the third email provides more information on their operations and how to volunteer with the organization. Next is a request to connect via Facebook. And then the final email, which is about 10 days later, is a donation request. So at this point, their subscribers know a lot about the organization, a lot about the good the organization does, and a lot about what they can get from donating. So it's a really successful automation campaign uh, because it really eases people into the organization with some compelling visuals. So in the abstract, I wanted to give you before, as we're wrapping up, some quick hacks. So uh, things you can do versus things you shouldn't do. So the things you should do, remind people that they have subscribed and give them a clear way to unsubscribe. Uh, second, tell them how many emails they can expect from you. Third, uh, send an email immediately after they join your list that says thank you. And then send them an attractive thank you offer, something to validate the, that their engagement with you. Things not to do, well, don't remind them, uh, don't forget to not remind them, don't forget to give them a clear way to unsubscribe, as if you want people to want to work with you. Second, uh, don't send a ton of information in one email because chances are good you're gonna lose their audience. Third, uh, don't forget to create uh, really good evergreen content. And then uh, don't forget to make sure that your brand, your colors, your logo are all included with all of that. So uh, next steps, how do you really do this? How do you really get going on this? Uh, here's really the, the, the five point plan for you. Number one, determine how it can be used for you. Two, identify your call to action goals. Three, Create, create a segmented list, create some evergreen content, and determine the timing. That's really it. It's, it's, uh, it seems kind of nerdy and it seems kind of difficult to do, but once you get it running, it's going to be a great asset to your business that, you're ne that is always going to be available and you're never truly going to have to worry about it. So thank you all for uh, sticking around. If you've, if you've made it this far, I apologize if it was uh, uh, a little rough. Uh, I do have uh, one last thing that didn't uh, get updated on this site. So I will go to my contact information before I tell you this. If you are interested in joining our uh, email list at BusyWeb, we'd love to have you. The easiest way to do that is to text 22828 uh, and text the word Busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y. 
and you'll be able to, to uh, join our list. So here is uh, the big reward for sticking through. If you are interested in working with us, uh, we would love to have you. And in order to incent new people to do to build websites or build a new marketing campaign with you, we are putting up a thousand dollars of our own money to incent you to do so. So, if you build a new marketing campaign or a website with us, we will include a thousand dollars of our own money to help get you on your way to bridge the gap between starting and when it really starts to to take effect. Uh, this is a genuine offer. Again, one thousand dollars. If you go to our website, you can read more about it. Or if you really want to learn more about it, I'd encourage you to reach out to me at trigby at busyweb.com. Finally, if you just want to check out and see uh, if if everything that you've got is working as well as it could, you go to busyweb.com slash buzz. It takes about 45 seconds to fill out, and you'll get a 10-page report as a thank you for us uh, uh, explaining what exactly you're, you've got going on uh, on your website and some recommendations for changes if you have any. Uh, it's absolutely free. Uh, it's no obligation, but it's a, a way of thanking you for sticking along with me so far. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, I think we've got another webinar in a couple of weeks, but uh, check out busyweb.com's events page to really find out uh, everything that we've got going on. And, uh, and uh, if you're interested in taking part in our $1,000 giveaway, I'm happy to talk with you, so please reach out to me. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a great and uh, safe Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you again real soon.